All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about 1911 versus 2011 for reliability considerations. Someone asked me recently, you know, which would you pick between this pistol and this pistol for, for hard use? And I said, you know, it's kind of apples to oranges because you know one is a single stack 45 gun with iron sights, and the other is a double stack 9mm gun with a ripped up. All right, it's not really a fair comparison. On top of that, the question I would ask is. How would you define duty use? How would you define hard use, right? Um, if you're a SWAT cop, or you get out of your vehicle, you, know, you do your call out, you do your raid, whatever it is, probably a good choice, right? What if you are doing a over the beach insertion, right? You gotta swim, you gotta drag all your equipment through the surf zone, then you need to hike for who knows how much distance, and it's wet, it's muddy, and you're carrying 100 pounds of kit. Is this the best pistol? Probably not. Probably this is the best pistol, right? Is a Glock 19 the penultimate piece of accuracy uh, and performance? No, but it's light. It doesn't rust and it holds 15 bullets and it's in a nice form factor. So duty use has a lot of different um, flavors. So just think about what you're actually doing before you pick equipment, right? Don't ask people for what they would do. Think about what you would do based on your, your mission and what you're likely to encounter. However, uh, in terms of 1911 versus 2011, I think a lot of the reliability argument comes down to magazines. Because you can put a ramped barrel in a 1911 like you would have in 2011. Kind of everything else is pr pretty similar. So, let's talk about magazines. So this is a MBX magazine. It's kind of like the, the ultimate, if you will, double stack 9mm mag. Right, I got one round in here just to show that good feed angle that's putting it at. And then I also have two different 45 ACP magazines that most people really think are kind of like the cream of the crop. So I got a Wilson Combat 47D and a Chip McCormick Power Mag. Right, these both hold uh, eight rounds uh, and the holes are a little bit different in them, but the big difference here is going to be um, followers. So Wilson has a plastic follower, Chip McCormick is doing a metal follower. Why does this matter? Well, for whatever reason, the follower material that Chip McCormick is using in their metal mags, is, 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 it's fine, right? It doesn't wear out. Wilson, however, this mag has a lifespan. It has a shorter lifespan than a uh, double stack 9mm magazine's plastic follower does. I don't know what they're doing wrong in their formula or why they're using a plastic follower because they own Chip McCormick. So why does this follower exist? And I'll show you why that's a problem. So I got my gun, empty mag, right? Now we all care about safety even though you're on the internet and I'm here. Did not lock to the rear. Okay, now that it's locked, it has minimal engagement. Right, that's the problem. The follower just wears out and it is not pushing the slide stuff up hard enough to lock the slide to the rear. Right? You don't want that in a duty gun. Chip McCormick mag. Good engagement. Locks to the rear. The follower is metal. It's not going to wear out. That's a problem. Right? You need a magazine that is reliable. You know, rifles to talk about barrels, right? Barrel life, barrel accuracy, and both platforms talk about magazines being like the heart of reliability. No one's running around with a aluminum 30 round magazine with a black follower in their M4 because you know that those don't work. They're using PMAGs, they're using one of the new followers, whether it's the blue or the tan one, so why are we still using this design? On top of it, I look at both of these mags and I would ask, what are the holes for? Why, why are they there? None of these holes are increasing reliability, right? They're not letting anything get out, they're just letting stuff get in. And then they're probably weakening the tube in some fashion. Right? Like, like nowhere else are we putting holes in the side of magazines. We put you know one or two holes in the back, like we do on this one, right? So I can see 10 rounds, I can see a full magazine, and that's really all, all, all that, that I need. So Reliability, 1911 versus 2011, uh, it comes down to the magazines. And right now, as it stands, 
the most readily available top of the line 1911 magazines are not a match for the most readily available 9mm double stack magazines. So everything else being equal, I think that a double stack 9mm 2011, 2019 as Joe Chambers calls it, right, wide by 1911, like this gun, when made properly, is more reliable than this gun made properly just due to magazines. Another thing to think about, uh, if we get away from mags, I'll put those in my back pockets, it's going to be the cartridge itself. So we can see uh, 45 ACP versus 9mm, uh, there is more of a distinct taper on the 9mm. So that aids in feeding and extracting, right? That, that taper is good. Uh, that's why you, know, you see like a MP5 mag is curved now, uh, and you'll get 8K magazines, right? That 762 by 39 cartridge uh, has a lot of taper, which is why it's very, very curved. So the taper that is in this cartridge inherently makes it more reliable, whereas this cartridge is more a straight wall effect, so it's a little bit harder to make it operate effectively. So even if you had a gun that was maybe not made ideally, say the chamber wasn't finish reamed, uh, a 9mm gun would have a better chance of operating successfully than a 45 ACP gun. That's all I have. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for tuning in.